No other sport puts its athletes through the rigors of driving a car at speeds in excess of 300 kilometers per hour while performing hundreds of tasks in order to maintain the razor-thin margins. This, combined with the ever-increasing complexity and technological advancements of the modern Formula One era, mean the drivers require an increasing number of tools to meet those demands. Above all, the evolution of the steering wheel has been a saving grace for today's F1 athletes. The steering wheel has come a long way in the world of motorsport, from the simple yet elegant round wheel used for controlling the car to now being a supercomputer capable of dramatically changing the car's characteristics with the press of a button. In this video, we'll look at how the modern F1 steering wheel came to be, as well as how designers and engineers have used technology to help their drivers extract even more time from their machines. Formula One has always been at the forefront of technology and for many years has driven the automotive industry in terms of innovation. The steering wheel has changed dramatically since the first Formula One season in 1950. The steering wheel has the primary means of steering a vehicle since the invention of the racing automobile. There were some early attempts using other devices, but the round wheel proved to be the most well-liked and effective tool for providing the driver with the necessary feedback. Early wheels from the 1950s were large, with most measuring around 400 millimeters in diameter. They were frequently derived from road car steering wheels and were made of steel or aluminum with a timber rim mechanically attached with blind rivets. This necessitated the use of gloves, not as safety precaution, but to avoid splinters and make it easier for the drivers to grip the wheel. During the early years of Formula One, there were no power steering or packaging restrictions that required smaller diameter wheels. But this was about to change. The rear and mid-engine Formula One cars were introduced in the 1960s after engineers discovered that putting the engine in the back could significantly improve aerodynamics and weight distribution. With the car's much more slender front profiles and a more relaxed driving position, there was now very little room inside the cockpit. Similar diameter wheels were introduced, and this time, they were motorsport-specific designs. Wheel rims became much thicker, and the use of leather further improved the driver's grip. The next significant advancement in steering wheel technology occurred in the 1980s with the introduction of more advanced electronics into the sport. Data logging, digital displays, and in 1989, with the introduction of the John Barnard-designed Ferrari 640 sequential paddle shift gearboxes. Following that, hydraulic clutch control enabled clutch control paddles to be mounted on the steering wheel, allowing for greater use of the car's aerodynamics with only two pedals in the footwell. In the mid-1990s, digital dash displays were mounted directly to the steering wheel, and few other drive controls remained attached to the cockpit. Everything was now on the wheel. With the advent of brake-by-wire control after 2014, even the brake bias control can now be managed via steering wheel buttons. This brings us to the present day. The entire wheel is now made of carbon fiber for lightness and strength. The shape is also distinct, with a more rectangular design that aids in weight savings and visibility, as well as being more ergonomic. Another cool modern convenience is the use of silicone grips, which have a sandpaper-like texture for grip. The removal of the steering wheel to allow the driver to easily enter and exit the cockpit has been required since the 1980s due to the confines of the cockpit. As a result, a rapidly detachable mechanism is used between the steering wheel and the steering column. The steering column's end is splined and has a groove machined around it, and the mechanism engages with matching splines to keep it in the 12 o'clock position. Then, sprung ball bearings engage into the groove to prevent the wheel from slipping off inadvertently. To remove the wheel, drivers can pull the collar of the mechanism, which releases the pressure on the springs on the ball bearings and allows the wheel to be removed from the column. As more switches are added to the steering wheel, a way to connect them to the car's main wiring loop is required. This is also accomplished through the same system. A special connector is built into the end of the steering column as a corresponding connector to the mechanism, which couple when the steering wheel is slipped onto the steering column. Because the splines in the column end ensure that the wheel can only connect in one position, there is no risk of the connectors misaligning as they connect. One of the first things that might strike you about the modern F1 steering wheel is the sheer number of buttons and dials. It even inspired former F1 journalist Walter Koster to ask what was possibly the longest question ever asked during an F1 press conference during the 2014 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Up your back to the past. 30 years ago, Niki Lauda told us, take the trick, a monkey, place him into the cockpit, and he is able to drive the car. 30 years later, Sebastian told us, I had to start my car like a computer. It's very complicated. And Nico Rosberg said uh, he pressed during the race, I don't remember what race, the wrong button on the wheel. Question for you two both. Is Formula One driving today too complicated? With 20 and more buttons on the wheel, are you too much under effort, under pressure? Uh, what are your wishes for the future concerning the technical program um, during the race? Less buttons, more, or less and more communication with your engineers? Can I ask you that question too? <laughs>
Who do you want to answer it? Who's it to? Oh, sorry, we'll sorry. You didn't listen. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yes, that one. Today's F1 drivers can interact with over a dozen buttons, knobs, rotary dials, menus, displays, and LEDs on the steering wheel. Again, all while staying out of trouble and battling wheel to wheel. So let's take a look at the most important functions and how drivers use them to their advantage on the track. Strategy settings. Every race is unique. Every race has its own quirks. And before even lining up on the grid, every single race on the calendar is strategized by both the driver and the engineer a thousand ways to Sunday. What happens if the MGUK fails? What if it starts to rain? What if it's really hot? What if one of the tires gets a puncture? Don't worry, the engine and driver have game plans in place for all of the above. And they're all documented on the steering wheel's rotary knob strategy settings. MGUK settings or motor generator unit kinetic settings. The powertrain of a modern F1 car is one of the most complex systems in the world. Thanks to the sport's hybrid era, the motor generator unit kinetic is a component of the hybrid electric power unit. It acts as both an electric generator and a motor, delivering power harvested from heat energy during braking that is normally wasted when such a system is not present. However, as Murphy's Law states, everything that can go wrong will go wrong, and with that complexity comes the possibility of failure on multiple levels. To ensure the driver's ability to work around some failures while preventing others, the team's engineers created specific engine calibration maps that the driver can control via a rotary knob on the steering wheel. Wet weather conditions can limit power, qualifying power, race power, low fuel power, failure power, and so on. In this regard, software is especially important as program maps are widely used to optimize the utilization and harvest of kinetic energy via the ERS or Energy Recovery System. Differential Balance a single scroll knob or a set of scroll knobs controls the differential balances entry, mid, and exit settings. This enables the driver to fine-tune the setup in small increments. Drivers can change the diff balance to be more open or closed. The differential enables or disables the transmission of axle power to the rear wheels. An open differential allows the rear tires to turn at different speeds, which is ideal for a long corner, whereas a closed differential forces the rear tires to turn at the same speed. This increases traction on both wheels, which is useful when exiting a corner. Brake Balance the brake balance is also adjustable via a scroll knob, which can be adjusted in small increments. It is another important element that is rarely discussed, but drivers rely on it to control their vehicles. A forward brake bias causes the car to understeer more, while a rearward brake bias causes the car to oversteer. However, this type of corner can also have an effect on brake balance, with faster corners requiring less brake pressure, benefiting from a more rearward brake balance. Display. There is a lot of information at the driver's fingertips when looking at the display of the wheel itself. The more obvious is the gear number, which is located in the center of the screen and shows the driver which gear is currently engaged. Lap times, tire temperatures, and the state of the car's ERS charge are also displayed, allowing drivers to better manage the car's resources, especially during the race's strategic battles. There are also a plethora of menus that drivers can access through various button combinations, all of which service a variety of functions, including various failure and performance modes. Despite on the team and driver preferences, the display may be located on the wheel itself or on the car's dash. Both have advantages and disadvantages, with one wheel screens providing more legroom but not being as effectively observed when turning the wheel. The majority of teams prefer the display on the wheel itself, with Williams being a notable exception. Aside from the pedals, the steering wheel is the only point of contact between the driver and his machine. It is a crucial tool that drivers must master to be competitive in the sport's razor-thin margins, especially in this modern era of Formula One, with complex systems that must be managed through the race. What are your thoughts on the F1 modern steering wheels? Are drivers overburdened with the number of buttons and dials to keep track of? As Walter Koster so amusingly pointed out, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to be notified of future uploads.